Good morning everybody, welcome back to the bird room. I'm Shane from Direct Bird Products. Um, most of you will have just watched Matt's uh, channel, The Canary Room. If you haven't, make sure you go over and watch it after, obviously, I've been there. Uh, you've watched mine. Um, usually, um, mine is an alternate weeks to Matt's, but as it's fell now, um, it's just in the rotation. But we'll get back to normal at some point. Uh, but stick around to the end. Um, a lot's going on in the shed. As you can imagine, we're midway through, or most people are midway through. Um, breeding season now I mean most of mine especially with the canaries are going to be finishing off over I would say the next six weeks on the other hand with the British they're actually really just starting to get in going now um, but more on that as we run through with the British shortly um, as always things happen you lose birds but um, that's bird keeping and it is what it is um, we can't do anything about it, so it is where it is. But as you can probably hear behind me, an abundance of five canaries, mules. Um, they were going to talk about the hybrids, I'll, I'll talk you through them, but that's about it. Um, but with the canaries, um, absolutely amazing season. Over 100 rung. Um, there'll be a lot more than that when they're finished off. But, um, all varieties of colours as well, which is a good thing, not just greens this year. We've got uh, colour variations, white, um, blue and white, or allied to white. Cinnamons, fawns, clears, a mix of everything really. So um, hopefully a lot of them will make the show bench. But if not, the pet shop's always going to be uh, uh, a good bet, especially with the uh, the coloured ones, the cinnamons and fawns and stuff. So, but on a on a serious no hopefully no um, you can breed as many as you want but are they going to be show quality and I am hoping um, some of them will be good enough to put a performance on the show bench but like I said <coughs> uh, behind me various stages um, of breeding with the birds uh, from ones in the nest um, on the second round bear in mind might be late but some of the birds I've not really hit it off. I mean, I've got one, one in over here. Actually, she's got um, a couple of young ones underneath her now, but she's not actually ever had a nest this year. Last year, I bred off the totally fine. Uh, no problem. This year, she seems to eat eggs. So, uh, all I did is put dummy eggs underneath her. I know she's a good feeder. I look back in my records. I know she's a brilliant feeder. Um, and one of the birds uh, that I had five chicks in the nest, I just put a couple underneath her uh, just to uh, ease the pressure slightly. And not just that, what I have found with some of the fives, uh, the ones with five in a nest, um, on three occasions now, uh, one of them seems to always get squashed where they're getting overcrowded in the nest, it is where it is. And um, at least that way, splitting the nest up, you're aiding your bets slightly more um, to to get the most out of them, um, at least that way it works. And like I said, uh, they, they was both set on the same day, which was the 6th of May. So they both hatched on the same, or the, the eggs would have hatched on the same day. I introduced them by putting um, an empty egg shell in there from one of the uh, other ones, a tip from Key Ferry. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it works. But anyway, I put it in there, uh, a couple of young chicks in there. First thing I did when I watched her, she went straight to the eggshell and started eating it. Um, it it's a, a common theme this year, I'd, I'd suppose, with um, with the birds just eating eggs for some reason. And I don't think it is due to lack of calcium because mine have got all the goodness and calcium needs that they're going to need. But anyway, that's that. But like I said, uh, yeah, we've got we've got quite a few. Um, Mules, um, goldfinch mules there with a Norwich. Um, we've got eight so far. Um, a couple of them are turning out really nice birds. So hopefully again, they'll be making the show bench uh, later on in the year. Because anyone that knows me, I, uh, growing up, golden mules, that type of thing. Linnet mules, a good linnet mule, golden mule, twite mule, that type of mule. Used to be fantastic on the show bench. And I'm trying to encourage more of the, the, uh, the lesser mules 
obviously back from in the day to, to get back on the show bench and see 10, 15 golden mules and, and linnet mules and that type of stuff back on the show bench rather than being dominated by the crossbill mules and the bully hybrids which don't get me wrong there's nothing with them I love uh, any linnet mules and hybrids but a golden mule is, I'm a, quite a sucker for them so that's the reason I've done them this year with the other up golden mule um, the golden mule with uh, the white fife now I've swapped him from over there because um, the ember just seemed lazy and I thought moving her around uh, would spur her on and, and give her a bit of a boost back to one to start a nest again. It worked. So she's just remind, uh, behind me just here. Built up. Um, as you can probably see she's actually sat on the nest now. But this goldie cock must uh, set his alarm earlier than me because she laid her first egg this morning and came straight down to, to check and he'd already been in there and pecked it so he's coming out shortly I'm going to put him in uh, another cage and try and get a couple of eggs off her um, as some miniature mules but like I said he sets his alarm well early this lad and it beats me every time so not this time fella he's coming out um, so far as like I said with um, the, the uh, Norwich mules they're weaned totally fine. I mean, well, I'm saying they're weaned. They're weaned to a degree. They're still calling for food off uh, off the feeder canaries, which um, are actually exhibition fives. They've done a fantastic job of bringing their own up. I thought, well, why not stick one under here and there? And, and they've done the job. They've fetched them all up. Um, I have got another load in cage. Can't really see the cage numbers no more because the cards are covering them up, like I said to you. What I tend to do is put the cards in the middle of the cages that's got chips. Uh, but that'll be cage 14. She's got a couple of golden mules under her now. Um, say they're seven, eight days old. Anyone that um, does want to breed golden mules, they're, they're probably one of the easiest mules to breed, if not the easiest. Whether it be with a Norwich um, or whether it be with a, another type of canary, it doesn't have to be a Norwich. Uh, but for the show bench, um, for me, it has to be a, a Norwich. Um, yellow to buff again. Um, I mean, my Norwich is a, a, self, a cinnamon self yellow end bird um, with a goldie cock, obviously a buff goldie cock. Or if you get a, a yellow goldie cock to a buff end, at least that way you can produce yellows and buffs. And obviously, we want the yellow cock birds to show. Um, like I said, they don't have to be um, with them, but. Definitely give it a go, um, they are one of the easiest and it will get you on your way to probably wanting to breed more mules and hybrids in the future. And the only thing to remember is just remove the goldie cock, um, but they do make brilliant feeders. So if you are putting them back, at least that way, reintroduce him when the eggs are due to act, just like I said that I did with the, um, the egg eating hen. And at least that way, um, he gets a chance to uh, bring his own chicks up. But um, they are they, they really are the easiest one to breed, so it's not, not rocket science to breed them. I think the hardest is catching the eggs. Um, so far as um, the Cinnamon Norwich now, I've um, done a little project for a friend of mine, Jamie, which I'm putting a, um, an old type cinnamon canary across her to uh, get some cinnamons for him. And then obviously you can have his cockbird bird back and the young ones back in due course. Just to try and um, up the number of the cinnamon uh, from the old varieties. So, as I said, with um, the canaries, I've got them at various stages now from leaving the nest. I've just dropped this cage down here on the floor today. She's wanting to go to the nest again. She's trying to... Um, turf the chicks out of the nest already I mean they should have left they are 18 days old now they should have left but obviously they're too comfortable in there um, I'm gonna reintroduce the nest pan later today and um, obviously she'll go for a last round um, but what I'm tending to do now is as I'm weaning things off is pick what I want to breed I can look at the uh, young ones that they produced and the ones that are showing more potential for show quality 
I can take another round off them. Or um, if they have had clear rounds, um, the first two rounds like the bottom row I have here, take a round off them and at least you, you can look back for next year, your breeding record and see what's produced what. Uh, but like I said, various stages um, from just hatching um, to three to four days all the way up to leaving the nest. Uh, the ones that are tending to um, be hatching now, that'll be them finished for this year. By the time they're weaned off, um, it's going to take us way into mid-June. Uh, and at that point, I don't want any any more chicks in the nest going straight in the mulch straight after that. Already in the stock shed with all the young ones in there, they're already heavily in the mulch and there's feathers everywhere. Um, so, in my opinion, with the canaries, that, like I said, in the way they are coming towards the end, and I'm not going to be taking any more rounds. On the other hand, with the British, like I said, um, chaffinch here. I've took the chaffinch cock out um, an hour ago, shouting like crazy for a. But he's chasing around the uh, cage, and um, just he's too aggressive. She's ready to lay at any point, uh, as well as the other chaffinch. They're ready to lay at any point, so. Me taking him out may settle her down, she might go to, um, go to lay, and if she does, all I'm going to do is introduce him when I know she's ready to lay, let him do his job, do the business, take him back out again, and I'll reintroduce him if I need to, to feed the chicks, but nine times out of ten, what I would tend to do with him is just leave him out. Um, she's more than capable of bringing him up on her own. Uh, Feed-wise, with, like I said, with... Um, the brambles and chaffies, they're just getting a general mix, exactly what I'm giving the canaries with regular mealworms and everything seems unky dory with them and they're doing the job perfectly. Brambles, um, the brambles I think I've laid this morning, I looked back at my records a few days ago and um, she laid last year on the 1st of June so they're, they're around that time again. Um, Fingers crossed this time, she doesn't go egg bound because um, I've already had that, which I'll explain shortly. But um, this should be fine. I mean, I've gave a couple of fish. She's got calcivit uh, in the water. She's got grit. She's got everything that she should need to successfully pass eggs. So, um, bearing in mind, last year it wasn't it was uh, soft shelled egg. So that's why she went egg bound. Green finches. We're getting quite a few green finch chicks now. Um, I've run 10 so far, which it doesn't seem a massive amount, but when it comes to exhibition greenies, they're not easy. Um, I could breed, I don't know how many sparrow type green finches, you know which ones I mean, um, the smaller type. But as the birds get bigger, the fertility lays and uh, the cocks don't feel eggs enough and they just get lazy and stuff like that or if you even get them uh, to have five full eggs should you be that lucky they're just lazy they might not even feed them so there's a lot of odds against uh, the exhibition type birds but like I said we've got five I have actually put um, the odd one under green finches the bottom looks totally fine uh, except for I, I watched the poor five try to feed them and the size of a greedy mouth is almost as big as a five egg. So as he's trying to trying to get the food in there, poor five thinks he's going to peck his head off. Um, it is comical to watch, but you will probably see if you are doing that. Um, a five usually gets quite sore around the mouth where uh, the green has been obviously closing his mouth as he's um, regurgitating the food into him. It happens, but the, the feathers will grow back, and it's, it's no harm at end of day. The ones in the flight, we have actually got uh, a few due out this week, actually, I think, probably by the time this airs, um, there's a nest of greenies due out, um, a really good pair actually, um, they're due out, like I said, Sunday, so by the time this airs, they're, they'll uh, hopefully be out and, and be reared totally fine, but obviously we'll, uh, we'll see in the next episode what happens with them. So far as the hybrids, I've... I've almost given up on them um the um greedy bully hybrid she's actually laid a third egg again today 
touch wood, all I can do is hope that this time they are full. But what can you do? He's, he's tread the um, end. I've seen tread her, but obviously not a good mating, and they were clear. It is what it is. I mean, I'm not um, even hoping that. The, well, I, of course I'm hoping they're full. Of course I am. What am I lying about? But um, if they are, then obviously great. But if they're not, it's not the end of the world. Um, as of next year, I'll be looking for certain um, British finches to do more on the mule library side of things. After all, I did start this uh, channel out to be breeding British birds, mules and hybrids. Um, but this year, obviously, I've concentrated on the fives um, a little more. And the, the mules and hybrids have sort of took a, a back bench. But the reason that is, is my breeding stock for next year end of the day don't know buying birds um if i've got decent birds to breed for next year don't get me wrong when they need an outcross here and there for this and that but um it's a foundation point for me for next year's breeding season so the um the linnets in the flight absolutely nothing as yet um Speaking to a few friends who also uh, keep linnets, they're in the same boat, um, not even attempted to nest yet. Now, I have seen her picking at um, what well, it is, put bits of dried grass in there, uh, coconut, um, coconut fibre. I've seen her picking at it, but no serious attempt to go to nest yet, so it is where it is. Um, lastly, but not leastly, with the British, obviously I've spoke about the greenies, they are at various stages um, I mean some of them um, are on uh, a new round a fresh round so I've not even checked them yet I usually tend to take them, uh, check them around seven to ten days and see what's what but they're the boring stuff because they're not happening uh, I can't tell you something that um, I don't know about so the reed buntings um, unfortunately we won't have them this year uh, what happened is the end built a nest, brilliant. Um, uh, built a nest, but yeah, cracked it here. Job done, first year keeping them. We're gonna breed some. And as I said, uh, she went egg bound. I managed to, I literally went in the flight and picked her up. Uh, managed to get the egg out and soft shell again. Now bear this in mind, this is a flight next door to the brambles. I'm wondering if it's something to do with some sort of light aspect. Um, even though the light, uh, the the flights are light enough, but with the cover that's in there, I'm tending to think that we need more additional lighting in there, which I'm gonna improve on for next year because I can't I can't have losing birds uh, to egg bound. But uh, like I said, managed to get the egg out, soft shelled again. Again, points to calcium, in my opinion, anyway. Um, then within no time um, she just lost the will and she's yeah she's, she's no longer here so cock bird then like I said I'm not holding hopes now for um, to get an bird. and even if I did get an bird, I really chappy cock shouting again he doesn't like the fact that I took him out but yeah I, I don't hold hope to them bonding and, and getting down to nest um, this year might uh, keep the cock bird for next year and um, try and get older than bird. We'll see. Um, he's just in the flight now, not up to no harm and, and just, just going about his business. So that's the British mules, hybrids. Now, let's take a look at some of the young birds in the stock shed. And like I said, there's a, an abundance of colour, variety, I'd like to say variety, but there's not. There's, they're all fives. Uh, except for a couple of young wing greenies which I took out of the fly. Now as you can see, we're in the stock shed with um, a lot of the young in here, hell of a lot. Um, the light in here, uh, you can see a difference obviously, uh, don't adjust your channel, you can see a difference in the natural light and what I've started to do is get my arse in gear and get the shed finished off. Um, cladded the ceiling, started on the new block here and um, just get on with it. Array, an array, array of colour. From fawns, blues, 
white, cinnamon, all that. Also, we do have um, this pairing, hopefully. Um, the eggs were clear last time, which is what it is. But hopefully, um, maybe this time, uh, he will fill the eggs. So, like I said, there was only together literally two mates, and uh, can't expect him to do a job when, when it is what it is. As you can probably see, what I've started to put on here is the um, the training D cups. Um, I threw hundreds of these away, and uh, obviously, further down the line, you never know we're gonna need them. I didn't think I'd need them. Didn't think I was gonna breed five like I am, but uh, so yeah. I mean, we're starting them on them. They're actually starting to um, use them now, so. It's good training uh, for when they're going to be in the show cages. So this is uh, going to be a block of 12 cages, um, four along the top, obviously three deep. I need to get my backside in gear and get it finished and just run out of materials. Um, just use it at the minute, ironically, as a little staging uh, area for putting the five scene as I'm cleaning the show, uh, the uh, stock cages out uh, just to take a quick look at them on that note what I'll do is grab a couple um, couple of the young ones out and just put them in the show cages they're going to be in there five minutes uh, while I just uh, get these cleaned out and at least that way I can have a quick look at them As we keep talking about showing, it's never too early to get your show cages if you haven't got them. Um, by the time he says I should have a load more, uh, the British show cages. Um, what we have coming is British um, number, alright, we'll start with the English pattern two and three, um, and Scottish pattern two and three. Now, also, hold on there. Um, we do have some number threes with uh, bigger drink holes for the uh, crossbill hybrids and the uh, northern bully hybrids. Ideal for your northern crossbirds. Um, I'm not sure how many there is yet um, until I take the living, but like I said, by the time this goes out to air, we will have them in stock. Now, these show cages from a, a different maker. Um, absolutely brilliant quality all round, and I don't think you're going to find cheaper anyway um, so like I said it's never too early to think about your show season I've mentioned showing 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 and um, you're probably going to need show cages anyway for training your birds in uh, if you are new to keeping birds so like I said if you do need them they will be on the website at some point if not this weekend on Monday um, when I know for a fact how many of each we've got so just bear that in mind so unfortunately that is it for today from the bird room I hope you have enjoyed everything you have seen um, any questions on anything to do with breeding what I'm feeding and this or want to know what sales we're at don't forget we are on Facebook um, my um, on the Facebook page or messenger or email through the website and like I said anything for your bird keeping needs directbirdproducts.com everything's on there if you can't see it on there, simply send me a message or give me a call. If you have liked what you've seen, um, might you consider subscribing to the channel, it costs you nothing. And we have super chat option on there now, don't know exactly what it's about. Um, typical of me, I suppose. Um, but that's an option on there. Um, and if you do have liked this video, leave a thumbs up. 
um, that shows me that you do like what we are producing and uh, obviously hit the notification bell that will tell you when the next episode is due out we are filming um, on the road or the bird room tours not on the road because that's Matt's saying um, we are obviously filming a, a few peoples over the next coming weeks uh, so ch stay tuned for them anyway thanks for watching everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, hope you're having a brilliant brilliant season just like we are